Mr. Games! Welcome to part three of the History of Transformers 1986 edition. With the movie came a whole slew of new toys. And one thing Transformers fans didn't find themselves saying in the summer of 1986 was... We can't wait! Didn't have to in 86. These hit shelves before the movie was released. Which was a bit confusing, seeing Hot Rod and Rodimus Prime together and not knowing what the story was. I just assumed Hot Rod was a limb and Rodimus was the body of a new combiner. And the three missing limbs were just sold out. And one place that's never sold out of Transformers is Big Bad Toy Store. Shout out to them for their awesome selection of G1 and modern Transformers. Since Hasbro decided to make the timeline futuristic instead of remaining modern, they were able to reap some of the benefits of no longer having to base alt modes on realistic vehicles. Like what? Well, no licensing fees of using real cars, or legal repercussions from the car companies if they were using the designs without permission. Plus, they could come up with something completely new. And while everything looked so different, it still kind of felt the same because it was similarly structured to what we had seen before. In the first two years, there were several Autobot cars released, and Decepticon jets to counter them. In 1986, three more Autobot cars were released, and two Decepticon aircraft to counter. Cup, the crotchety old-timer pickup truck. Old-timer? You're not? Experienced lad, you should learn to appreciate it. Blur, the lightning-fast-talking speedster. Absolutely, positively, definitely, nobody can get the job done faster than I can. Nobody, nobody, nobody! Is there something wrong with his timing program? Nah, that's just how he is. And Hot Rod. If you're gonna ride, Dano, ride in style! The Chosen One. Or right place, right time, right heart, as I like to call him. And the Decepticons got a pair of new aerial assailants. You wouldn't be talking about us, would you? Sure am. Cyclonus. The warrior. Was joined by... Scourge. The tracker. As they continued the Decepticon legacy of air superiority, and also served as army builders for those who could afford to buy extra sweeps and the armada. Although the numbers of these ground and air troops had reduced, the size had increased, giving these guys a sense of superiority over the previous releases. Have I got the wrong idea? Or are these guys a bunch of wimps? Yes, they appear to be wimps. Transformers had never been good at maintaining scale consistency, but 86 represented a definite shift in most characters being a bit bigger than the ones who came before. One thing that did remain the same size, though, were the minibots. Well, most of them. Six new minibots were released, but only one of them was a new original mold. Who are you? Him wheelie! Him friend! Grimlock's little buddy who liked to talk and rhyme. Wheelie, say find friends today! He's also the tallest of them, in keeping with the theme of the new designs being bigger. The other five were repaints with slight remolds of the original 84 minibots. Tailgate. A recolor of Wind Charger. Hubcap. A recolor of Cliff Jumper. Swerve. A much less grumpy version of Gears. Although getting stepped on by Trypticon will give anyone a real negative attitude. Pipes. As Optimus Prime used to say, transform and roll out! A more positive rendition of Huffer fancied himself a mini Optimus Prime. And Outback, the Aussie's answer to Brawn, who was the first minibot to include an accessory, a roof-mounted cannon. Almost had triggered it by accident. And another new release that felt familiar was Blaster's Tape Army. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this. For a whole year, Transformers fans had asked, where are Blaster's tapes? The answer finally came in 1986, with a pair of two-packs. Rhino. Came with Eject. And since the Decepts had a new tracker and Scourge, the Autobots countered. 
My man Steel Jaw can sniff out any trail, if it's hot or if it's not. A lion packed with rewind. He's on the case in his database. The brilliant archivist. This all looks familiar. It's in my databank someplace. Soundwave was probably angry that he only got one new member of his tape army in 1986. With Ratbat. <laughs> who was offered in a two-pack with a reissued Frenzy. Rumble. No, Frenzy. In another effort to even the playing field, the Autobots got their answer to the Decepticon Triple Changers, Astro Train and Blitzwing, with a trio of their own. Well, well, Commander Modesty's here! Hey, that's Major Modesty. Springer, one of the featured characters of the movie, transformed from robot that looked good. Yeah, but not good enough. To helicopter. <laughs> to armored car. <laughs> that looked fantastic. Are you crazy? Yeah, like a Foxatron. Look at that gorgeous design. His judgment is obviously impaired. And there was Sandstorm, who transformed from robot to dune buggy. Now I'll show you! Eat my dust! To helicopter. <laughs> and back. One of the better looking triple changers in all three modes. Not bad! And if you dreamed of having the USS flag, but didn't have the funds, or the space, Broadside was a fine consolation. Transforming from robot to jet to aircraft carrier and back. Rough season fog ahead. He also required a good amount of imagination because even though he was a mid sized Autobot, you were supposed to pretend he was giant sized. Imagination is a big part of the fun of toys but that's a pretty big stretch. Everybody's a critic. The Decepticons rounded out their own trio of triple changers by adding Octane, the robot slash oil tanker slash jet. Even though he was a futuristic toy, his alt modes were based on older models. Older model, I'll show you older, watch this! 1986 saw the introduction of our first non-Cybertronian Transformers 2. Call sanitation! There's junk all over the street! No Defensor, that's not junk. That's a Junkion! Reep, reep, oh, Rufy, so say the Junkions! Rekgar from the Planet of Junk talked TV decades before anyone else did. You are in danger of being cancelled or losing your time slot. And Gnaw, one of the savage Sharkticons, dolers of justice for the cruel Quintessons. Feed him to the Sharkticons. And they also served as another army builder. There are a lot more of those can digging, grill cracking things. He was also a triple changer, transforms from robot to shark creature to bowling ball and back. And the Decepticons added the ultimate combiner with the Predacons. Dive Bomb the Eagle. Headstrong the Rhino. Good year for robotic rhinos. Rampage the Tiger. Tantrum the Water Buffalo. Or is that Energon Buffalo? And the leader, Razorclaw the Lion. Predacons attack! Unlike the combiners released earlier in the year, all five Predacons were the same size. They combined to form one of the coolest Transformers ever, Predaking. He is right! Predacons unite! Predaking has the power! He needs nothing more! 
and the Decepticons continue to catch up to the Autobots' greater numbers with a pair of battle chargers. Runabout and Runamuck were the counterparts to the jump starters of the previous year. We're two of the hardest charging dudes the Decepticons got! You could pull them back in vehicle mode, and they would roll out and spring into their robot modes. With the new era came new leaders. Optimus Prime, who could live up to him? One flaming Winnebago of love gave it his best shot. With Optimus Prime being laid to rest on toy shelves until 1988, Autobot protector Rodimus Prime was charged with guarding the Matrix and leading the heroes. Autobots, prepare to roll out! His box was significantly smaller than Optimus Prime's. And you gotta wonder why. Well, it's because it allowed more fans on a tighter budget to own the Autobot Commander than had been able to in the previous two years. He may not have been as confident in his abilities as Optimus was. I don't think I've got what it takes to be our leader. But in time, he was certainly... Good enough. And for those who had the budget, Ultra Magnus rolled out as Rodimus's second in command. I can't deal with that now. When he wasn't distracted, that is. Just once, couldn't your attitude reflect the gravity of the situation? Sorry. Even though Optimus may have been one with the Matrix, plenty of fans hadn't had a chance to get him in 1984 or 85. If they were hoping for a chance to own Prime in 86, then that's exactly what they're gonna see. Because Ultra Magnus featured a white recolor of Optimus's cab, plus a new trailer, to North Americans at least, that served as a car carrier in vehicle mode, Autobots, transform and, motor. and combined with the cab to form a super robot. Ultra Magnus! The courageous Ultra Magnus is a born leader. And since Megatron was no longer in any condition to lead after the thumping he received from Optimus Prime in the movie, Unicron reformatted the Decepticon leader. Behold, Galvatron. Yes, behold, again. 1986 was certainly a year to behold. Megatron was back and totally insane. <laughs> He no longer featured a realistic gun mode, since they had started to complain. They? They? Who are they? So now he transformed into a futuristic laser cannon. As well as a futuristic ray gun. Drop your weapons, you're under arrest! Oh, that tears it! Get ready to meet three of my friends, Smith, Wesson, and Schofield! Fun. Oh, that damn kid is gonna get me killed. Well, I guess I gotta do this the old-fashioned way. Just like back in Korea. 1972, with that used boat salesman. And also featured electronic lights and sounds that got annoying after just two seconds. This is blowing up my audio scissors! No, no, it's music, the symphony of destruction, and the anthem of agony! Like I said, totally insane. That wraps up part three. Stay tuned for the fourth and final part of this series that's sure to break the bank. We'll be looking at the big boys, the Autobot and Decepticon cities, plus a winged hero whose ego is the size of two cities combined. Fortunately, this motley crew has been blessed with my presence. This series has been brought to you by Patreon Power. All of the videos you watch on this channel are made possible thanks to the generous support of the Patreon tribe. To keep the rockets fueled, the tires filled, and the Matrix shining bright. To join our ranks, visit patreon.com slash michaelmercy where all are fun. Drop an auto thought in the comments spot and to join the tribe, blast subscribe. Nervous day.